Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Great to see you on this Monday. I hope we're having a wonderful start to our week out there and we've got some pretty good news here in the forecast. Now, obviously, unfortunately, we've had a pretty crazy past couple of days as the storm system has crossed across the country and brought with it a lot of damaging weather from severe weather to strong winds to flooding to even uh, some snow there in those higher elevations. And definitely let me know if you did see snow overnight last night. Let me know where you're watching from and if you saw that snowfall. Um, obviously here in Charlotte we did not see any snowfall but we sure did get a lot of rain. I measured about 2.2 uh, .2 inches of rain here where I live uh, in the city and uh, that was pretty common for a lot of folks across the southeast and mid-Atlantic yesterday. And I will also mention those winds were whipping last night as that front rolled on through. So again, let uh, let me know what you saw where you're at in the comments and uh, tell me what you're seeing now if things are beginning to clear on out. Now, kind of the game plan for today's video, we are going to wrap up this storm as we are still seeing a little bit of leftover wind and um, some snow and rain up there into New England. But after that, we're going to discuss kind of uh, what's down the road here. We've been talking about the storm for so much now uh, that we've kind of got to begin to switch gears now and talk about the week ahead. And uh, as we get closer to Christmas, what is Christmas looking like? Is it going to be uh, maybe cold and snowy or maybe more warm and wet? Uh, we'll definitely have to break all that down and we will in this video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. The growth the past two weeks has really been uh, quite astonishing. We've had um, just insane, excuse me, insane amounts of growth over uh, that time period, and we're looking to definitely continue that here into the end of year. And uh, I think we're going to have a really amazing start to 2024 on the channel. Uh, all signs are kind of pointing in that direction. So again, if you haven't already, definitely consider joining aboard here by hitting that subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell for the latest notifications, uh, because I'm sure it won't take long for another big time storm like we saw this last last week to once again roll on through. So definitely want you to be up to date with all of that information. Uh, with that said, let's uh, kind of get into it and I'll go ahead and stop rambling on here as I'm sure this intro has probably already gone on way too long. Okay. So taking a look here at um, the United States as we're seeing that sun begin to rise across the country and we're getting a good look at visible satellite, we're definitely seeing a lot of a nicer picture than what we saw yesterday. Uh, obviously yesterday we had a ton of cloudy weather and stormy weather across much of the eastern half of the country. Uh, you'll notice we still definitely have that storm still here kind of in the New England area, but look at this front draping all the way down back towards Cuba. Uh, that's, you know, how potent the storm system was. It really expands a big area, and you'll see all these very strong thunderstorms now moving off the Atlantic seaboard kind of out near the Gulf Stream. And all of that moisture is still being thrown up into you folks in Maine. So if you're watching in Maine, uh, you still had a pretty rough morning this morning, but the good news is will continue to improve throughout the day, much like we're seeing everywhere else behind that cold front. Now taking a look at our current watches, warnings, advisories, and radar imagery, you'll notice much quieter than what we saw yesterday, which I'm sure is good news to a lot of folks. Now, obviously, again, if you're watching up here kind of in Maine, still seeing a big plume of moisture working its way on through, but that should continue to clear on out over the next couple of hours. And just kind of zooming in a little bit more here into the Northeast, we are still getting some snow showers back towards Vermont, New Hampshire, and sections of the Adirondacks in New York State. Now, if you're watching from any of those places, please let me know how much snow you saw. I'd love to get those reports on exactly uh, how much fell with this storm overnight. Also, let me know, how were those winds? Were they gusty? Uh, definitely, if you're watching kind of down here in coastal New England, would love to hear uh, how windy it got where you live. Now, going into the rest of today, uh, as the storm pulls away, you're already kind of seeing something that will continue throughout the day. We are seeing some lake effect snow showers kind of coming here off of Lake Erie and uh, Lake Huron, as well as Lake Ontario uh, from all of that moisture, or really that wind, I should say, uh, flying over those very warm lakes, allowing some of those lake effect snow showers to begin. And because of that, we do still have some leftover winter weather advisories um, down here into the mountains, partially for black ice, but also uh, just due to the fact that we could see a little bit more snowfall this afternoon due to uh, those lake effect snow showers coming in off the Great Lakes. Now, outside of there, just taking a look at the country as a whole, there's really not much to speak on right now, but that will change going later into this week, and we'll get there in just a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, just kind of time out the next couple of days here a little bit, and this part of the video is going to go really quickly because, uh, spoiler alert here, as I fly through this forecast, you'll notice... Uh, not really a whole lot of anything going on uh, between really now and as uh, soon as Wednesday. 
So let's go and back this up a little bit. Uh, again, all that precipitation moving out of the northeast, still some leftover snow showers and lake effect snow showers on the backside throughout this afternoon and into this evening. But by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning here, you'll notice it is going to be very clear across much of the country. Now, I think going into uh, afternoon tomorrow, into our Tuesday, we could see kind of a little bit of a short wave try to sneak on through sections of the plains here. That could bring some snow showers, but overall impact should remain relatively light as that kind of swings on through Nebraska, Iowa, maybe even northern Missouri going into our Tuesday afternoon and evening and uh, even into early Wednesday morning. Now, once we get into that Wednesday, Thursday time frame, that is when our next storm system is going to begin to kind of think about uh, rearing its ugly head <laughs> for a lot of folks. And you can kind of see the beginning signs of that there over Texas here on your map. Now, one more thing I will mention before we talk about that storm system uh, are those temperatures out there. Now, it is definitely a lot cooler right now than it was uh, before that storm system came through and brought all that warm air with it. And that general idea of below average temperatures will continue into tonight, into uh, our morning tomorrow. But honestly, by the time we hit Tuesday, Wednesday, we're back to average, if not kind of above average temperatures here through much of the eastern half of the country. Uh, definitely above average temperatures in the plains, still about average up and down the east coast uh, by the time we get later on into this work week. Now, looking at uh, tonight's low temperatures, it should be cool again, that freezing line getting all the way down kind of even near the Florida Panhandle uh, with 20s uh, pretty widespread through much of the Ohio River Valley and into the Northeast. You'll notice all of that because of that cold front that moved through with that storm system yesterday. The good news is, though, we're rebounding pretty uh, nicely in the afternoons with pretty average December temperatures uh, for much of the country tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so that's kind of, uh, you know, wrapping up what's going on with that uh, storm system that, you know, just moved on through. Now let's kind of discuss our next one. Uh, now I'll go ahead and start off by saying I think our next storm system won't be nearly as impactful in how dynamic uh, maybe this last one was, but it definitely will bring some rain and even some snow to a lot of folks. So let's go ahead and time that out for you. Now you'll notice uh, going into the next couple of days, really not that much energy here on our map in the United States, but that changes as we do get a bit of a trough to kind of dig out west and eventually try to swing on east into the central plains. And that's when I think we'll begin to see some impacts from that going into sections of the Four Corners, Texas, uh, and other parts of the Southern Great Plains. All right, so this is kind of Wednesday afternoon and evening. You'll notice we have this kind of cut off piece of energy uh, just spinning away over the desert southwest. And that is what is going to lead to uh, enough lift in the atmosphere that we're going to see some snow and rain here through parts of New Mexico, Colorado, and Texas going into uh, the kind of second half of this work week before eventually that storm system tries to go down riding through the Gulf Coast states and maybe uh, up the East Coast. A lot of question marks after this kind of moves through the southern great plains but um, we'll definitely um, you know watch the trends here over the next couple of days now you'll notice as i continue to move this ahead over time uh, that low pressure continues to dig and uh, kind of hangs out there bringing some precipitation again through those areas we just talked about now this is the gfs model it likes the idea of kind of continuing to move this further off towards the east, uh, eventually through the Gulf Coast states and up the east coast going into this coming weekend and into the early following next week. Now, unfortunately for you snow lovers, we really just don't have much cold air anywhere. <laughs> so uh, as nice as that storm track looks, there's just no cold air to supply it and bring any snow. European model, a little bit of a different story, agrees that this kind of moves into the southern Great Plains, bringing that snow and rain. Uh, but uh, the European is much slower with this transition to the Gulf and kind of really uh, brings this way further south and just kills it off over Florida going into the long range. So differences between our models kind of once we get past this Thursday, Friday, uh, but the models do agree that we are likely to see some snow and rain over sections of the desert southwest and into the southern Great Plains going into Wednesday, Thursday. All right, so latest uh, GFS model here for our uh, early kind of, or really uh, late Wednesday evening, you'll notice that rain breaking out here over the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle and also some snow here back into the higher elevations of New Mexico and southern Colorado. 
Uh, continuing to bring this ahead in time, you'll notice that just kind of meanders around, continuing to bring that snow and rain for a lot of folks into our Thursday afternoon and uh, even into Thursday evening before eventually uh, this storm finally continues to push off to the east, bringing rain with it uh, into sections of eastern Texas and then eventually into the Gulf Coast states and the southeastern United States going into this coming weekend uh, with, uh, honestly, a pretty big uh, wash out through much of the weekend and then rides it up the coast and then could potentially bring some snowfall into parts of the northeast but still again lacking a lot of cold air here uh, for the chance of any kind of real big time snowstorm now, of course again we'll continue to watch the trends and see if that changes at all uh, but right now it looks like uh, this is going to be more of a rain event for most folks Okay, so taking a look at those snowfall totals, again, I think we're going to get a pretty healthy dosing of snow here into sections of the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. Uh, I think three to five inches is pretty likely there in extreme northwestern Texas and extreme west um, Oklahoma there through the panhandle with lighter amounts the further kind of uh, east you go here. But I think the real winners out of this would be the higher elevations of southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, where we could see more than a foot of snow uh, on those highest peaks there uh, in that region. Now, as for rainfall, I know rainfall is going to be a pretty big deal here, obviously. Uh, a lot of people will have uh, a lot of holiday plans this time of year. The uh, latest forecast from the Weather Prediction Center for rainfall, uh, it's pretty easy to spot where that storm is going to go. Obviously, most of the rain falling in Texas and then eventually into the Gulf states and potentially trying to curve up the East Coast. But uh, especially those of you living along the Gulf Coast from Texas all the way through Florida, expect a very rainy weekend ahead uh, with potentially three to five inches of rain falling right along the coast with lesser amounts amounts as you go further north along the I-20 corridor and uh, even less amounts further north than there along the I-85 corridor. So, um, you know, definitely a rainy weekend for some folks, but other folks you'll notice really nothing on the map here. Up here into the Ohio River Valley, up into the Great Plains, rain is going to be hard to come by over the next week <clears throat> and um, potentially even longer than that. Now, what are the temperatures going to look like this week? Well, where that kind of storm system tracks, expect cool temperatures to hang around everywhere north of there. Uh, you'll notice going into this Thursday and Friday, I think this is a great kind of depiction of what to expect as a general pattern for the next week or two. Cooler temperatures along the southern states into the Gulf where we continue to see these storms kind of track and bring that cloudy, cool weather. North of there where it's just going to be kind of sunny uh, and no supply of cold air, pretty well above average temperatures through the Midwest, through the Northeast, the Ohio River Valley, and up into the Northern Great Plains. Uh, it's going to be a pretty common pattern through the long range. And another big reason for that, again, is just this overall storm track we are expecting. So. As I move this map ahead in time, you'll notice these big bright red colors take over much of the northern tier of the country, indicating ridging and warmer weather, while to the south of there, you'll notice we get some blue to kind of uh, continue to track here through sections of uh, the southern tier of the country, meaning, again, that southern jet stream will continue to stay active, and uh, you'll notice we get kind of rounds of that blue uh, to move through the southern tier of the country, now through about Christmas. Uh, so a pretty... Uh, wet, you know, pattern for much of the Gulf states while a pretty dry and warm pattern north of there. And unfortunately, again, for you snow lovers, uh, the models have been very consistent in this very strong area of low pressure or the Aleutian low, as we call it here, uh, just to the placement that it is over Alaska there. Uh, now, you might be wondering, well, why is that a big deal for, you know, snow lovers throughout much of the United States? Well, uh, we're going to get very strong flow around this low pressure. And that is actually going to be strong enough that it kind of floods the United States with this very warm, mild Pacific air. Uh, and that will have no problem ruining any snow lover's dream here up and down the East Coast. Really, honestly, through Christmas, it looks like. So uh, I know that's a bummer for you folks who kind of were hoping for a white Christmas. And I'm never the type to write anything off because, uh, as we know with weather, things can change on a dime, let alone two weeks away. Uh, but the pattern is really not there for any blockbuster um, kind of snowstorm for a lot of folks through Christmas. Now, uh, the one sprinkle of good news I will give you, this is pretty common in El Nino. Uh, we often see December is kind of a wash, if you will, and we don't see much in terms of wintry weather. Uh, but I think going into January and February will kind of change gears here and maybe even into March. Uh, where we see a, lit, uh, excuse me, a little bit more of that cold air coming down from Canada Why we continue this very active southern jet stream. And eventually, they're going to have to line up and we're going to see uh, a pretty big snowstorm somewhere before the winter is done. And honestly, probably in a couple places a couple different times 
uh, before we finally hit spring. So uh, don't lose hope. I know this uh, kind of stretch up ahead. It looks a little boring and warm, uh, but maybe get out there and enjoy it. Always good to get some sun before I think winter really comes back with a vengeance as we get a little deeper into it going into January and February. Alrighty, well, with all that said, again, hopefully this video was of some good information to you. Uh, I know, you know, nothing too crazy right now, but honestly, I think a lot of us are fine with a little bit of a breather after the kind of week we've had uh, here in the world of weather. Now, with that said, have a great rest of your Monday out there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.